evening and a very warm welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. Each year our gladiators get stronger, fitter and quicker. And we have to see if we can find contenders to match them and sometimes even beat them. This year, over 25,000 people all applied. And there's a lot at stake here. We're talking about £14,000 worth of shared prize money. <laughs> and the chance for our two champions to drive away with one of these fabulously hunky four-wheel drive off-the-road vehicles. Let's see and meet four of the lucky ones out of 25,000. They are... Rachel Colwick. And Joe Harrington. Well, I think that gives us a little bit of a clue as to what you're good at. Tell us first what you do and where you're from. I'm from Evesham in Worcestershire. <laughs> and uh, I teach aerobics and step rebox. So, um, from that little display there as well, that tells me you're pretty good at gymnastics too, right? That's right, I used to compete. Uh, I finished when I was 18, but I competed from when I was about 10. And were you competing on a national level then? Uh, a few competitions, yes. And um, I understand that you actually bumped into our very own Lightning on a couple of occasions, is that right? That's right, we used to compete a lot when we were younger. I met her in most of the competitions that we did because we were in the same region, so, you know. <laughs> Great surprise for you to see her on this show, and yeah. you thought, yeah, I can go on and do that. I know you got to meet her tonight. How do you feel about that? I think it'll be good. I'll enjoy it. <laughs> well, we hope you do. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Colwick. Now, Joe, you're from Birmingham. Yeah. Tell us, what do you do for a living? Wow. Brought the whole house down. What do you do for a living, Joe? I'm a horse riding instructor. And where do you instruct people to ride horses? Um, mainly around like Birmingham, but I will travel out to other people's places, you know, and things like that. So I should imagine you'll be very good on joust, eh? Hopefully, yes. Balance will come into it. And if I don't, any of my pupils out there watching, I say I'm in trouble. But Joe, tell us, why does a horse riding instructor want to compete on gladiators? You know, you've heard about this show. Yes, I mean, at the end of the day, you see athletes, um, footballers like yourself try and prove to be the fittest of the fittest. Why not horse riders? Yes, rightly so. Let's see how you get on. Off you go, Joe, get yourself ready. Well, that's how fit our girls are. Let's have a look at our fellas. Tonight they are Ken, the body, George. And Phil Campbell. I called you the body is that you do a bit of modeling I understand yes I've done, I've done, I have done some modeling uh, mainly photographic and fashion modeling it helps me to relax it's fun I enjoy it really yeah. oh that's that's very interesting so would you like to do some more of it yeah if there's anyone out there who uh, would like to put forward some modeling proposals you know get in touch with me I'll have a lot of time on my hands after the show now let's talk about your real job what's your real job so to speak my real job is that I'm a science teacher 400 school children over there supporting me. Where's that, Ken? That's uh, at Fartown High School in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. And, and on top of all this, modelling and sciencing, you also enjoy running. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. I run the 800 metres. I've represented Yorkshire and I compete in national championships. Well, listen, you're a fit guy, and uh, we look forward to watching you in action. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken the Body George. Now then, Phil, you're a salesman. What do you sell? Well, I've just changed jobs, actually, John, so uh, if I get out of this alive, I'm going to be taking on with a cable TV company. What preparation have you done for tonight? Well, I've been training on and off for, for years, really. I spent a lot of my time in the neighbour as a physical training instructor. Uh, and I've played a lot of rugby in my time, so the only thing I've done special for this is running along the shingle butts along the Unsolon beach where I live. Sort of uh, trying to simulate, if you like, the travelator on the eliminator. Are you here for fun, or is it a serious thing for you? Well, it's a bit of both, but uh, I wouldn't mind one of those jeeps over there, you know, so I'm a bit of both, really. Well, let's see who you get on. Let's hear it for Phil! <laughs> so, the girls are ready. Arika's ready. Next event, the wall. Well, as you know, our contenders have just 60 seconds in which to climb 36 feet to the top. 
And if they reach the top, the first contender will receive 10 points. Our second contender up will receive five points. There is another five points available for the contender who's still sticking on to the face of the wall at the end of the 60 seconds. Fash is at the top. I'm staying firmly at the bottom. That's where Jo is standing too, and she's going to be chased by Jet. Rachel's going to be hunted by Scorpio. Well, let's take a look at Jo Harrington's stats. She's 24 and she's from Litchfield. And Rachel Colwick, 23 years of age, hailing from Evesham. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Oh, a disastrous start for Rachel. Slips there, but she's straight back on. And Joe knows she's got a lot to do. Jet beaten for the first time last week by Erica Rogerson, so she'll want to make up for that. And both girls doing well now. And despite that bad start, Rachel's nearly caught Joe up. And both girls at the top. Joe's over first for the 10 points, and Jet's beaten again. This time in the practice run you were pretty fast but I think now you're even faster well I'm not surprised having one of those chasing you I got halfway up I felt myself slip but I uh, wasted time but saw one in reach grabbed it pulled myself up and off I went again what goes through your mind when you hear John Anderson blow that whistle and you know a gladiator is chasing you run like crazy and don't stop till you get to the top Joe 10 points let's hear it for Joe there's Joe's mum Edna as happy as Joe at those 10 points well I suppose I could say you were on a bit of a loser before you even started I think that was the most unreal and amazing climb I have ever seen Jet you've got one or two words too yeah I mean these girls are so unbelievably quick this year and we would like to think very much that gladiators has inspired girls like that not just to be good but very good and they certainly are they were the best let's hear it for scorpio and jet so after one event rachel colwick's five points joe harrington ten so now we move into the men's wall and phil is going to be pursued by the wolfman oh wolfman's lost none of that charm ken's going to be hotly followed by this will be the first time the big man has climbed the wall. Hello. The Wolfman's ready. He's mine. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Both contenders have a 10-second head start to put as much wall as possible between them and the Gladiators. And Phil already cleared the overhang, and so has Ken. Gladiators are up and at them, and it'll be interesting to see what impact Warrior can make on this event. Almost defying gravity, hauling 21 stone up that wall. And Wolfman, a little lighter, doing great. In fact, both Gladiators doing well, but not well enough. Here's Phil over for 10, followed by Ken, the body George for five. Good climbing, guys. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? So, Phil, ten points, well done. How did you do it? Well, in practice, actually, I was a bit cagey about it. I was looking at different routes. I was trying this, I was trying that, and I wasn't really, really clear in my mind until today. And then Wolf rung me up at the bottom of the wall saying, you've got no chance. And I thought, come on in, let's have a go. Did it scare you at all, Wolfman psyching you out? You know, that guy's a fast guy. Yeah, he is a fast guy, but he's not as fast as me. There you go. You're going to see plenty of him, Phil. <laughs> well done, Phil. Ten points! <laughs> well, Ken, came up second. Five still very valuable points. Yeah, um, five points is better than no points at all. And the main thing was to keep worry off my back. I picked, picked a difficult route coming up there, and it seemed to be a successful choice. Well, you got your five points. Well done, Ken. Cheers.
women's wall. You really were fighting a losing battle. Well, I thought I uh, scuttled up rather well up the wall there. He likes scuttling up the wall. Yes. Uh, he did get up quite quickly, but I was quite pleased the way I got up there. I think uh, any lesser man, I think I would have caused. But well done, good competitor. And, um, well, it's happened again, hasn't it? Quiet! But no excuses. He was very fast. I believe you're having a baby. And Not I just the wanna, moment. And I just want to, I just want to say congratulations. Oh no! Is this a changed wolf? We're sure to find out during the series. In the meantime, Ken's on five, Phil's on ten. Next event, Powerball. Joe has got the blue ball, and Rachel has got the red balls. And guarding those five baskets is our deadly nightshade, Falcon and Panther! for two points. What's happening? Medic! John Anderson has stopped the game. Joe looks like she's taken a knock. And those points will count for Rachel. In the replay, Nightshade comes in. Looks like her arm may have caught her in the nose. says she's fine a shake of the head up she gets and Joe's family relieved like all of us there are still 19 seconds of play left three two one as John Anderson says 19 seconds of play left plenty more time for both girls to pile the points and they do both girls oh Falconelli pulling Rachel's trousers down Scores two points and into a forward roll. Rachel again slips Panther. Two points. And Joe released by Falkland for two points. That 19 seconds made all the difference to both girls. Only the second show of the new season. The Gladiators obviously still a little ring rusty. Those tackles not going in hard enough. Well, if you look at the replay, you can see Falcon tackles well enough, but doesn't bring her down. Rachel slips through the Falcon's claws and baskets the ball. Well done, Rachel. It's a tough one, eh? Yeah. Yes, it is a bit tough. I thought, like, that they would be a bit slower because they're bigger, but they're not. Well, you did very well. You got 12 points. <laughs> Joe, how are you feeling? I'm all right now. It's just a bit slow. It's like, tears to me. I was at smack on the nose, but it's fine. No problem. Were you trying to get the middle basket for the big three points? No, I was, uh, I, I was missed on that one, so I was going for another one. And all of a sudden, Nightshade just came out of nowhere and down and went like a ton of bricks. Yeah, she's known to do that. <laughs> well, you got six points. Thank well done, Joe. <laughs> After two events, Rachel's on 17. Joe just a point behind on 16. Next up, the boys' event. Phil is grabbing blue and Ken is grabbing red. Protecting those baskets is three of our biggest gladiators, Shadow, Cobra, and Saracen! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! 
you know, one bit of hard work. Pompey, Pompey, the gladiators reckon they're gonna beat us in. Let's have a look, eh? Three, two, one! Oh, Ken, straight into shadow. Oh, Phil Faring, no better. And these guys know it's no tea dance out there. This is a tough one. And he slips it past Saracen. Shadow misses Phil. Ken eludes them all for another two. Saracen. Oh, he's allowing Ken to stretch for two. Phil shakes the shadow. Cobra's got him. Oh, will he get it in? No, he can't get it. Oh, look at that, Ken, with two points there. He's an 800 metres man, so he won't run out of puff. Throws it in. This isn't basketball. It's supposed to be power ball. Shadow takes him down. Good tackle. Nice bit of judo there from the shadow. Phil still frustrated. No points yet. He chucks it. Ken. It's two in there. Well done. There's Phil. Still can't get him in. And the whistle there. A duck for Phil. Good event for Ken. The body, George. And don't his pupils love it? In the replay, Ken's tackle by Saracen. Throws it in for two points. Phil not so lucky. He escapes Shadow's tackle by Ducky under those giant arms. Thinks he's got a middle basket, but who tackles him from behind? Shadow. Great recovery from Shadow there. Well, Phil... Not happy with that, John. Not happy with that. I mean, I thought it was going to be all right in that, because I like the old... Played a lot of rugby over the years. I was actually looking forward to it. But that's the way it goes. Didn't get any. Unlucky, Phil. No points. Ken, yeah. you had the look of determination all over your face. Do you know how many points you got? No, and I have no clue. I just kept going. Kept powering it in, man. You got 12 points! Oh. Played. I've learned a lot from him over the years. So, you know, hopefully this draft points will set me up for the, the remainder of the competition. Well done, Ken. 12 points. <laughs> it's here for Gladiators! Saracen, Cobra, and Shadow! Well, after two events, Ken moves up to 17. Phil stays on 10. So, two events down. Don't go away. Join us after the break here on Gladiators! with one of the new games of the season, Pyramid. Our two contenders have to climb 32 feet right to the top of the pyramid. And how about this? We'll put two gladiators right at the top of the pyramid as well who'll attempt to throw them off. And tonight, Joe and Rachel face Nightshade and Zodiac. Contenders ready! Giant liquid all sort, but twice as hard to climb, not that I've ever climbed one. Well, Joe's thinking she's doing, trying to get Nightshade down, she won't move. Over to Rachel and Zodiac, and Rachel coming out the worst there. Joe and Nightshade, Nightshade picks her up and locks her down. Oh, all the way to the ground floor. It's far easier to go down this pyramid than it is to go up it. Oh, not so much fun, though. There's more rolling and rocking than rocking and rolling. Ah, oh, there they go to the bottom. And can Rachel get up before Zodiac for 10 points? Go on. And Nightshade does a somersaulting roll with Joe to the ground floor. Rachel three steps away, two steps away from 10 points. And Joe like a barnacle there, hanging on for dear life. And time's up. Tremendous struggle there. Oh, and little Joe still eats Max. Great game. And Rachel comes down like Zebedee. 
See how strong Nightshade is, just throws it to the bottom. Tougher then, I like it. Nightshade, looked like there was a bit of wrestling going on there. Yes, I was surprised actually because um, I thought that she would just go straight past me. I didn't think that she would try to attack my feet. But I don't think it's a very wise move because I do weigh 11 stone and she's a lot tinier than me, so she would have been better to race me to the top of the pyramid and not hang on to my feet. Do you think it's easier or harder going against a big person in this game? I think it's tougher. The contenders have to race up to the top of the pyramid and we just have to come down and get them. So um, she played well, but uh, it's not wise to mess with Nightshade, I don't think. That's not good for her health, huh? <laughs> Zodiac. Hi there. Firstly, one of our new games, did you enjoy it? I loved it. I thought it was great. It does get your lungs going, though, I tell you. A lot of hard work involved. Did you have any plans about how you were going to tackle her? No, I just thought, I actually thought, again, like Nightshade, she'd just try and dodge me. But she came straight for me. Good on her. A lot of wrestling again, eh? A lot of wrestling. A lot of wrestling, yeah. But uh, she, she did a good job. She's quick on her feet. And they didn't score. No points. No points. A lot more games to go yet, though. Well, let's hear it for Zodiac and Nightshade! <laughs> After three events, the scores are unchanged. Rachel 17, Joe 16. Well, next, it's the men's pyramid. Ken, a national 800-metre athlete. Stands six foot two, so he's used to heights. And Phil, an ex-Navy gun carrier in the Royal Tournament. He's going to try and lift himself to the top of the pyramid. Well, they're waiting at the bottom, and up there at the top, Cobra and Hunter. Contenders, ready! his whistle, the gladiators bounce down, and their mission to stop the contenders reaching the summit. And Ken goes straight for Cobra's legs. Oh, he obviously wants to bring the gladiator down, then sprint him to the top. On hitting the red mat, both must release one another, and the gladiator can't retackle the contender until the second step of the pyramid. But what's going on here? While Phil escapes Hunter, Cobra's still got hold of Ken. There's Derek Redmond pulling the two of them apart. I don't know what referee John Anderson's going to say about this. There's a wrestling match going on. This is meant to be a sprint to the top, not a wrestle to the bottom. Hunter and Phil rolling down the hill. And he's got Hunter by the ankle. There's Cobra, no helmet on, and nor is Ken. I bet the Egyptians didn't have this kind of trouble. And he tries to give Cobra the slip. Not having that. Once those gladiators get their arms around you, it's a vice-like grip. And at last, it's over. What a fantastic battle. There'll be no points there, though. Well worth checking out the replay. And we can see Cobra locks his arms around Ken, holding him down. And Derek Redmond trying to prise them apart. John Anderson will have something to say about this. When there is any clinch, it is important, particularly when people hit the deck, that they release immediately. In this game, neither gladiator obeyed the rules. Both of them are disqualified, five points each. Well, he doesn't mince his words. You heard it from the main man. Controversial stuff from the gladiators. Hunter, Cobra, you heard that, guys. Both being disqualified. What do you got to say? Well, it's a very difficult game because they do actually grab on to us and we're grabbing onto them, we're rolling around with each other. It's hard not to grab hold of each but other. But you've got to release them. Yeah, yeah, but when they're ripping at you and you're in the spirit of the game, you know, you don't think, you just want to get them off. Normally, do you think anybody will get by you? I'll tell you what, John, there's only two people who can get by me in there, and that's Jack and Jill going up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Cobra, disqualified. Well, the thing is, I was trying to let go of him, and he's holding me down because he wants to get up there first. He's trying to get a head start, so I'm trying to let go, and he's sort of pushing me down, and I'm trying to get on top of him to get up there first. So, well, if anybody understood that. But he's a good guy <laughs> anyway, and I really love him. Let's hear it for Hunter and the Cobra! Well, Cobra disqualified, but maybe the ref was a little harsh on Hunter. With six of one and half a dozen of the other, 
and as Hunter tries to get up, it was definitely Phil holding him down. So, after three events, Ken has 22 points, Phil has 15 points. Event four, Jout. Rachel is sitting up there on her sky bike, and she's going to be facing the Scorpio! Just before the bikes start bucking, let's take a look at our own pre-show chat with Rachel. She talked about what her thoughts would be as she went into this event. I'm a bit worried about Joust, as um, Joe, my opponent, she's a horse rider, so uh, she's going to be quite good at that, but um, you never know, she's not used to being smacked around the head while she's uh, actually riding, so we'll see what happens on that one. <laughs> Tinder ready! seconds of rough riding and they don't come rougher than Scorpio banging you on the back of the head with a club and Scorpio getting in all the early work and landing some good blows there all to the head and this is going to count he's lost the balance and that's it center reeling and flying off the sky bike and Rachel's not moving John Anderson's moved in Rachel's husband, Richard, looking on. The physio and doctor with her. Her parents, Tom and Mary, anxious. And nobody likes to move her too quickly. And that's a relief. She's up now. Oh, and she's smiling. And they're taking her out of the arena to find out what the problem is. I wouldn't like to second-guess anybody, but it could be a trap nerve. Anyway, Richard there on his way out with her. Ooh, and I think that cuddle will help. Let's look at that replay. Scorpio gets a bang-in on the back of Rachel's head. Rachel's all over the place. And she slips off. It was it, uh, actually, it was only when it started spinning. It fell off, on It her. wasn't because she did me, it oh, was no. because it started spinning. It was her short time. <laughs> so, yeah. They ripped you the pair, didn't they? Yeah. Go on. As soon as we have any further information, we'll let you know straight away. Well, back at the second female joust, horse rider Joe Harrington is facing Scorpio. seconds of joust and as a horsewoman Joe should be used to playing against the clock and certainly she'll be able to stay in the saddle a talented equestrian but not used to fending off blows from a combat club while riding across the countryside putting up a good show so far oh double handed hits and she's given as good as she's getting well done, she's made it, five points, good joust. So after four events, Rachel stays on 17 while Joe gallops to 21. Well, we can now go across to the medical room to see how Rachel's getting on. And she's with Dr. Richard Sibthorpe and Mike Garmston, our physiotherapist. Hello, Hello. You still feel quite winded? Yeah, I do. There's our producer, Nigel Lithgow, to check on her situation. It's still quite tender in the lymph now. thoracic spine. Well, you know we're going into hang tough next. How do you feel? Well, obviously, I want to do it. Do you know the lady that fell off last year? She, well, she, had, a, she had a bit of time to recover. Yeah. She went back on. Um, have, she we got, a, she had have we got a belt that we can put on? Will that help? That would help. Support. support. Yeah. Some absolutely. back support? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Beyond but the minute, the minute you're caught, I'm hanged tough. I'm going to drop. I should just say, look, I'm going to drop, let go. <laughs> and I shall go. 
I mean, I want to have a go. Anyway. So sorry, Rachel. So sorry. Right, we'll take it easy. Okay. But the final decision as to whether she carries on or not will Going have to, to be the, the doctor's. Ken is up on his sky bike, waiting to do battle against Trojan! Six foot two, eyes are blue. We'll take the glasses off. Let's have a look. No, they're not. Kendo ready! Those male gladiators enjoy being up on those sky bikes. The problem is trying to put your weight behind the club while going against the rhythm of the bike, which can throw you off. And no problems though for Ken. He's riding that bike like Billy the Kid. Trojan looking more like the Milky Bar Kid. This looks like it's going all the way. A well-earned five points for Ken. Good to see them shake hands at the end of the day. Ken's mum, Catherine, delirious. And his dad, Alf, looks quite happy too. Ken, you've really come here to do war, haven't you? Yeah. You really want a battle. I'm going to go for it. With my fans behind me, I'm going to be unstoppable. Well, you got five points. Well done, Ken. The second contender to face Trojan is Phil! <laughs> Phil's girlfriend, Donna, whistling there. I thought she'd be more used to being whistled at. Ready! And Ready! Three, two, one! A little sign there saying Trojan sex on legs doesn't say anything about being on a sky bike and fill a double hander. Round around the houses and getting a few more blows in than Trojan. And Trojan still looks uncomfortable up there. And Phil unloading everything he's got. And you've got to admire his work weight. Look at that unloading on Trojan. And the time against him. Unlucky Phil. Still he picks up his five points. And after four events, Ken's on 27, Phil's on 20. Moving on to event five, hang tough. First for the ladies, due to Rachel's back injury, is Joe Harrington. She's facing Lightning. Lightning stats won't frighten Joe. She's trained hard for this, even giving up her job, as you told us earlier today. Due to my training and getting this far, getting on gladiators, I had to sort of like give that up for temporary time because of like seven days a week working with the horses. And I went to work in the bar and pulling pints and keeping the customers happy. <laughs> um, find horses easier, um, obviously, because uh, you know they, they don't answer your back, they don't throw things at you behind the bar if you don't serve them quick enough. Um, and they're just, you know, much nicer company to be around sometimes. And in order to give Rachel as much rest as possible, we're going to start with Jo, and she faces lightning! Contender ready! across the rings to Lightning's platform. And Lightning unbeaten over two seasons, and what a great show she had last week. Well, let's see if she can take Joe down and keep her 100% record. And Joe looking good up there, one eye on the rings, and oh, look at that, scissors straight on, takes her down, another one bites the dust. <laughs> I know, I thought I saw one route, went for it, and then out of nowhere she appeared with the legs, that was it, I was gone. She literally sucked you in there. I know, I know, very strong, very hard event that is. 
you can't actually plan your route because you don't know where the gladiator is going to go. So it's just by chance. Absolutely. Well, never mind. In the replay, as Ulrika so descriptively said, we can see it was just like a Venus flytrap. Now, Rachel Culwick, the accident you had falling off joust has rendered you incapable of carrying on, I understand. That's right, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull out. I uh, landed and I've hurt the bottom of my back. I'm going to have to go to hospital for an x-ray just to see what I've done. Now, you look very calm and you look very composed. I know you must be gutted. I am. I'm very, very upset. But as long as Joe can carry on with my points and get through, then that's all that matters. Well, you've had some great support here over there, and I hope that your supporters will give their warm welcome to our next contender. Do you think they will? I think they will. <laughs> They're a good bunch. Well, our contender and our standby is Miss Jo Neath. Come and say hello, Jo. Nice to meet you. How do you feel? Oh, I can't believe that I'm actually going on, but uh, I mean, Rachel's done absolutely brilliantly, and uh, I'm going to try and go through for her. Now, tell us just briefly a little bit about yourself so we get to know you a bit better. Okay. I'm a, I'm a graduate in sports science. I've just come from Crewe, but my hometown is Blackpool, Lancashire. So, obviously, I have no supporters here tonight because I've come on last minute, but uh, to everybody at home, you know, a big hello. Well, if I may adopt you as my contender, you can adopt Rachel's point, which is 17, and you'll carry on with Hang Tough, our next event, and uh, it's great to see you. Okay, I'll do the best I can for you, Rachel. Okay. Okay, I want some supporters for me, please, tonight. Thank you. And, Rachel, it's a sad goodbye. We hope you'll stay with us for this evening until you have to go off for your X-ray and wish you the very best of luck in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Let's hear it for Rachel Colwick. Well, very sad for Rachel and her family. She was so looking forward to it. She wanted to carry on. Joe Neath, let's hear it for Joe! And a quick look at Joe Neath's stats. Five foot five, eight stone eleven, small but powerful. Ready! Rachel supporters will get behind Joe Neath. Fresh arms, fresh legs, and I must say she looks very comfortable up there. And this is what I like when lightning traverses those rings. Very tough. Joe in the scoring zone. And she's going to have to defend. Lightning grasping at straws at the moment. Running out of rings, keeps those legs high, defends her off. And Joe's got to keep moving. Blonde on blonde, ring on ring. She's in the scoring zone. And lightning frustrated here. This is going to do. And lightning can't get to her. Too late for the scissors there. Good start for Joe Neath, five points. After five events, Joe Harrington, 21, while Joe Neath swings into the lead on 22. So now it's into the men's event. First up is Ken against Shadow! See Shadow on the rings, undefeated in duel, but not really built for this event. Still the big man looking very comfortable. Get that weight round your body and you're in trouble. Oh, he's got him in the body scissors. And it's definitely... Good night, Vienna! The Ken's wife, Donna, looks disappointed, but I'm not sure his little son, Elliot, knows what's going on. In the replay, Ken tries to push Shadow's body away, but Shadow's legs snap shut like a vice. Another one bites the dust. Phil Campbell up next. Contender ready! Gladiator ready! Shadow 
I was born ready. Three, two, one. And notice that double-handed swing from Phil. Not seen that before. Now, Phil, a man with a lot of upper body strength. Double-handed again. And he's past Shadow. Oh, he's missed it. Shadow's there. And he's down. Well, is there any event that Shadow doesn't excel at? Neither of the guys picking up any points, which means that after five events, Ken stays on 27, Phil remains on 20. We're going to take a short break now in order to give our contenders a little breather and to give us a chance to bring down about 15 tons of equipment to set up the Eliminator. So join us after the break here on Gladiators. awaiting the start of the Eliminator. Now, in the women's event, Joe Neath is one point ahead, each point being worth half a second. That will, of course, give her a half a second's head start. Joe, in the pink outfit, you will go on my first whistle. Joe, in the blue outfit, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Well, the eliminated course couldn't be tougher, especially with only half a second separating each contender. And both up the road together. Both onto the hand ladder. Joe needs just about keeping the lead. Joe touches down first. Nothing in it as they hit the cargo net. And this is where it gets tough for both the women and the men. First one up takes the furthest zip line. And that's going to be Joe Neath. And now extends her lead. And a good one point landing from Joe. And Joe, if she hangs on to the balance beam, she could be through to the quarterfinals. And don't forget, she comes with fresh legs. She came in at the 11th hour. Bad news really for Joe Harrington, but then all the contenders know the rules. As Joe comes into the top, grabs the rope, Geronimo, another quarterfinalist. And Joe Harrington. Well, what must she be thinking? The last ounce of energy. What a great contender she's been, and she makes it first time. Best man won. Well, I heard the words there. Best man won. Put up a terrific fight, head to head, right up until the cargo net, and then down the zip line, you were slightly ahead. I was right. I mean, it's absolutely terrific run, but. Uh... I mean, I'm really pleased. I've won for Rachel. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for supporting me anyway. And uh, like Joe said, she's been a brilliant contestant. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, Well, I'm listen, happy. when you're in the quarterfinals, which you've just won yourself a place for, you'll have your own supporters, right? Too right, yeah. We'll look forward to that. Well done, Joe. Unlucky Joe did so well. Yeah, very unlucky. Um, going up the rope, I spun round and saw my opportunity to put my foot on it. On the monkey bars, her leg got tangled up in mine. Put me off balance and I nearly thought I was going to go because I was hanging on with one hand. And then up the cargo net. And then once I saw go to stop that travel agent, I thought, that's it. Well, so close, yet so far. Hey, my supporters have been absolutely fantastic. Everybody over there. Let's hear for Joe. Well, Joe Neath will go on to meet last week's winner, Erica Rogerson, in the first of our quarterfinals. So now it's time for the men's eliminator. Now, Ken is seven points ahead. That will give him a three-and-a-half-second head start, which um, must please you a little bit. It does a little bit. I'd have liked to be in further ahead, but, you know, three-and-a-half seconds is better than nothing. So I'll be going for it. They've done their job tonight. Now it's my turn for me to do my job. Well, not a lot in it. 
Well, three and a half seconds is a fair bit if you're Linford Christie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad if you're Nijinx, so you're chasing him, so. But well, you're looking focused. Yeah, I'll be okay. I'll, uh, I'll catch Ken on the net. We'll see you both. Very best of luck. See you at the end. Ken, you will go on my first whistle. Phil, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Three and a half seconds will feel like an age to Phil Campbell, but no time at all to Ken George. Ken on the road climb, and Phil's there already. Fingers crossed in the crowd. And Phil Campbell pumping ahead of Ken already. Phil half a second up at the moment. What a great camera angle for the cargo net. You see the distance they have to get to the top of the zip line. Down the zip line. Phil's now about two seconds up. Piling on the pressure. The balance beam. And now composes himself. And he sprints up the travelator. What a fast time that is. Geronimo, he knows he's done it. A quarter finalist. There's Ken, he's given it his all. He's beat the eliminator, but at the end of the day, he couldn't beat Phil. Congratulations, Phil. Hard one this series. Certainly is, but. I wasn't going to lose that, John. I wasn't going to lose that. Congratulations, Phil. Another winner on the Gladiator! May I wish you the very best of luck with your teaching job and also with some modelling, because with this guy has got a fabulous body. And if there's anyone out there, bit of modelling, come and Yeah, get in touch. Well done to a great contender. So Phil moves into our quarterfinals against Dean Pollan. How can any dad be a loser with support like this? Well, tonight's show certainly had it all. Pain and ecstasy. We've done our bit, now why don't you do your bit and join us next week for more nail-biting action here on The Gladiator! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. More double acts of pub quiz fans and handy darts players team up for the ultimate knowledge and skill game show. Bullseye is next here on Challenge. And tonight at 9, Bradders and the Brain Boxes are here for the chase. Let's go.